recognize the gentleman from North Carolina, Mr. Walker, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Richards, the Washington Post reports that Christians are terrorized in UN refugee camps and as a result are unfairly excluded from the United Nations process. Is it true that Christians are underrepresented in the refugee camps because they are at risk of being attacked by non-Christians in the refugee camp? We are very concerned about Christian refugees, mm -hmm. and uh, most refugees are not in camps in the Middle East. And so we place a priority on uh, resettling uh, refugees who are Christian or minorities if they are in danger. You said you, you place a priority on Christians. Yes, uh, did I hear you earlier say in this hearing, uh, I might have misunderstood it, that Christians are not fleeing Syria because they feel safe? Uh, no, 4 percent. Well, can you hold, because I'd like to play that back, if we'd put it please on the video, because I'm pretty sure that's what you said. Would you play that video, please? Please get back to us on that, on that question. We are um, bringing Christians from Syria. Not very many, 29 in a whole year. They're underrepresented, so, in part because they make up a smaller percentage of the refugees from Syria. That's, and that's the problem. They're, um, they're not fleeing because I'm, they feel safe. Ms. Richard, I'm done with that there. question. You, I'm moving said they're on. they're not fleeing because they feel safe. Ms. Richard, some, how, how, many, how many Christians have we brought, brought in to, uh, in the last so five years? Ms. Ms. Richard, I have a question. In the last five years, how many Christian refugees have we brought 4 in? Four percent of all the Syrians we have brought have been Christian or other minorities. You brought in 53. You tell me that's 4 percent because according to numbers that aren't hard to find, you can look this up we on CNN, Wikipedia, or any place else. There were 2 million Christians decimated, okay? 2 million Christians. According to Pope Francis, he calls it genocide. Just last month, an Assyrian bishop was pleading for ransom money, 200 hostages held, some young ladies. Do you know what ISIS does to the young females? It's brutal. I'm sure you're aware of that working for the State Department. So please tell me why that we have brought in 53 Christians. How do you know they're Christians? What's the process? We uh, had just checked the number as 4 percent of the 2,400 total Syrians brought in since 2000. Uh, 11 have been Christians or other minorities. Wanna, they oh, are brought in because they feel that they are in danger because of that. So we agree with you 100 percent that these people should be given a chance for resettlement if they present a, a case. But you said today that Christians are not fleeing, fleeing Syria because they feel safer. Would you like some, to retract some. that? What I would like some to say Some Christians? Is, how many some? 10 percent of the pop, pre-war population of Syria was uh, Christian. Around 2 million, yes. And so we are seeing less than 10 percent of the refugees coming out uh, uh, are Christian. And 200,000, so according to my numbers, yes. A disproportionate yes. number of Syrians staying in the country are Christian. Now, why is this? It's because a higher percentage of them support Assad and feel safer with him there. Okay. But of the ones who come out, who choose to flee and feel that they are in danger, those are the people we want to help, absolutely. 50, 50, nine per year since the last six years. You see why there's a credibility issue, Ms. Richard. I'd like to build the balance of my time to my good friend from South Carolina, Mr. Trey Gowdy. I thank my friend from North Carolina. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have, uh, we have two former that kind of uh, disabused some folks of some incorrect uh, apprehensions with respect to the current gun laws. Mr. Burson and Mr. Rodriguez, would you agree with me that it is currently against the law for somebody who crosses the border without permission to possess or purchase a firearm? It's sometimes I'm, unfair. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering back to my, my days prosecuting gun crimes, which has been a while, uh, Congressman. I think you and I share that. Uh, my, my recollection is, is that, yes, that it, would be. It that. is sometimes unfair yeah. to, to um, put pop quizzes to yeah. folks who haven't done something in a while. So <laughs> just trust me when I tell you that if okay. you have crossed the border without permission, you cannot legally purchase or possess a firearm. If you have overstayed a visa, you cannot legally purchase or possess a firearm. In fact, if you're legally here on a visa, only in very limited circumstances can you legally possess or purchase a firearm. So those are all categories with existing law where you can't purchase or possess a firearm. Are those lists made available to federally licensed firearms dealers so they can make sure they don't sell firearms to those three categories of prohibited people? Gowdy, I'm just not familiar with the ATF uh, uh, process with regard to that. I know that uh, uh, I, be, I, I don't believe that DHS uh, circulates those lists. Well, 
this is this is the frustration that I face. Is I, I listen to an administration call for additional gun laws. Um, they want uh, additional gun control in the wake of almost every tragedy. That that's the very first place they run, and it just forces me to ask. Well, I wonder how we're doing with the current gun laws that we have. And and I'm not going to ask you for the statistics because I didn't tell you I was going to, and and you shouldn't be prepared, and probably would not be prepared. But I would encourage both of you, as former prosecutors, to go back and look at the statistics coming out of the Department of Justice on how many prosecutions exist for current gun law violations in all those three categories. And if we're going to create a list with, by the way, no due process, called a, a, a watch list, then at a minimum you ought to give the list of visa overstays to federally licensed firearm dealers because that list already exists. We already know who's on that list, so your due process rights have already been afforded to you. So if there's going to be a list given to FFLs, I would think it ought to be the visa overstay list before it would be some list conjured up by, by folks um, that we're not familiar with. So I would encourage both of you, put on your former hats, and uh, so maybe we can meet privately and find out what you, what you learn on that. With that, I would yield back to the chairman. Thank you. The gentleman yields.